you crazy hill divers, making the CEO step down from the game from the Arrowhead Studios. What were you thinking, Verdi Herndy? Mm, that's a right. I'm the man you know, Z. <laughs> Sorry, I just messed with y'all. Trying to make sure that my accent doesn't fall into an Irish accent so that you don't know where I'm from. Unless you think I'm from the Netherlands or I'm from the Sweden's. <laughs> That's right, we're going to talk about Helldivers 2 from the man who platinumed the game. Like 1% of all players have platinumed Helldivers 2. And you're talking to one of them right here. Who platinumed Helldivers? This guy. <laughs> That's right. Big time Hell Divers player. I truly enjoy the game and I've watched all the drama unravel and I haven't talked too much about it other than bragging about how amazing I am at Hell Divers. If you ever want some samples, just come with this guy. I'll get you 50 plus samples every time. Guaranteed. Anyway, let's get into the article here. Let's talk a little bit about it. I'll give you a little context as. The beloved Helldivers 2 CEO steps down from the game to focus on making the game. So it's very interesting because this the people love the CEO. Uh, Arrowhead, if you did not know, is an independent studio that made Helldivers 1 and Helldivers 2. And in fact, it looks like they made it a uh, gauntlet back in 2014, which is like an old, old game. An old top-down uh, hack and slash game, right? So, uh, and Hell Divers is like a top-down shoot 'em up, right? Hell Divers, third-person shooter. Even though you can play in first-person quite a bit, I equate it more towards Metal Gear Solid, right? E except for it's all action, and and I mean, there's a stealth element to it. I I do play stealth, thank you very much. But it's it's a shoot 'em up. Like a uh, third-person shooter, you're blowing things up, right? And uh, they're an independent studio, and they will continue to be an independent studio. And everybody loved the CEO because he he's a Swedish man. He takes it from the Swedens. And his... Uh, <laughs> you want me to pronounce his name, don't you? Don't you? Let's let's go to his Twitter. Bilstid. Um, I don't know what the hell his name What the hell is his name? Johan Pilstead is stepping down because uh, it's, it, 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 people really liked him because he was interactive. He would talk a lot. If there was a problem that they noticed from the um, you know fr from the community, they would address it. And it's funny because the the game sold more than twelve million copies, and he said something like, "There's more than twelve million." 12 million copies is more than there are Swedes. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know. And uh, they're going to replace him, though. And Pilstead's going to step down. He's the one of the creators. Of, or he's one of the founders of the company. And he's going to take a role as the chief creative officer. What an absolute, like, mind-blowing move. What a stud to do this. He's going to be replaced by Shams Shams Jorangi, <laughs> Jorangi will replace him. He works as the chief business development officer at Paradox Interactive. It was a chairman of the board and investor at Manor Lords Publisher Hooded Horse. I don't know what any of that means, but what they're saying is, and this is just a great answer. He goes, uh, "Big update. I've decided to step down as to hire Shams as the new CEO of." Arrowhead, we go way back, and I wouldn't trust this business to anyone other than his or his hand. He has such big, strong hands. And uh, he says, what about my involvement? What am I going to do? He, he's not taking a check and leaving. No, he wants to be the chief creative officer, so he gets 100% more of his focus in games and the community. He said his... his um, viewpoint is he, he was he was looking more towards the business side of it and they kept getting more employees obviously because the company got real big and sony's investing more money into them and he's like look they want to make this game survive and the one thing i've noticed is that the the gamer accounts have definitely 
have plummeted since the the PSN controversy, right? So basically, Sony came in and said, anybody who's playing this, whether or not it's on PC or it's on Xbox or wherever you're playing it that's not PlayStation, you need to have a PlayStation Network ID. And then there's 150 countries where they don't have PlayStation Network. So everybody's like, well, how am I going to play this game? The fans downvoted the game into oblivion until they rescinded the PlayStation thing. And I heard there's some still squirrely things going on. But, you know, Sony backed off a little bit, right? And, you know, these guys just seem like they want to make a good game. And they want everybody to play it. And then internally, a lot of players left. But then a lot of players have been upset with um, them nerfing things, right? They've been, quote-unquote, nerfing the game. And I 100% agree with that. Look at this this guy. Look at that pun. Him. He seems like a real stand-up shfeed. He's a shfeed, didn't you? He's going to be real stand-up dude. He's going to make sure that you don't join a cult where you get your head smashed in. You know, despite what Ari Aster makes you think from A24, you know, the summertime does not mean that you get your face smashed in or you join a crazy cult where people kill you. It doesn't always happen that way. Just sometimes. That's a midsummer joke, folks. Midsummer. It's okay. You should watch it. But maybe not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, it's... Uh, so, they, ner they nerfed a bunch of things. You know, basically, the CEO said... At the you know the the previous CEO was like I feel like they're taking the fun out of the game. We want the game to sound like fun, and there's a whole meme about over you know, destroy you know enemies with overpowered weapons, and none of the weapons now seem overpowered. They seem like you're constantly trying to catch up, and it's funny because there's these things called major orders. So essentially, there's a community, and you have to destroy robots from like Terminator and. You know, Terminids from Starship Troopers, right? That's the premise of the game. You're just going in, you're either squishing bugs or smashing bots, right? So what they keep doing is like rebalancing the game, which is annoying. And they keep changing the different guns that they have. And they keep releasing new guns, but the new guns kind of suck. And essentially, they're just making everything like... You don't feel like you have overpowered weapons. And they keep having these major orders where the entire community has to participate in it. And not everybody does, but it's a goal. And you get rewarded for it. Well, the people... There's been numerous failures over the past several weeks because people just can't do them because the guns aren't strong enough. And I think the community is saying, we don't need the guns to be, like, insane. We just want them to be able to have fun with and they keep taking like our favorite guns. Like I was an Eruptor Pro, and they 100% nerfed my poor Eruptor. I love the Eruptor. They took it away from me. And then there's a lot of guns. Like it started, it's funny because I started from the beginning, and it, they started with the Breaker, and it started with the Rail Gun, and then it's just been, it's been getting softer and softer to the point where everybody claims that they're using uh, balloon animal guns. So. I see the CEO sees what's going on. He sees there's a problem. He needs to get in the trenches. He needs to fix the game. He needs to bring the people back. And he's doing that because he has a background in being a creative director. And he didn't want to spend as much time on the business. So here's somebody who actually understands what the fans want. Wants to make a better game. He's showing that these all these studios with all these billions of dollars back behind them can be shown up by a little tiny independent studio that's doing a great job trying to listen to fans. I hope they win. I hope they survive. I think this is a good move. I don't think people should cry too much because he wants to help the game get better. And he said it himself. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt. What do you guys think? Are you Helldiver fans? Do you play? I know this isn't like the usual news that I do, but I, I, I love the game and I want to see things happen and I, I like to see this. And I like to see people who care about the fans do the right thing. What have I been preaching on this show for as long as I've been doing it is we want to see that you care about the general audience. We don't want you to push out the message and garbage because of whatever. And they, they fall back against certain elements trying to be pushed into this because it is managed democracy here, people. That doesn't give you democracy. That it means it's managed properly 
by the good folks of Super Earth. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm interested. I think this is a good move. I think this is a smart move. I think this is the Swedes telling us this is the way. So I'm down. I'm excited. In the meantime, catch our full-length audio podcast. It's on iTunes. It's cool. Come stream with us. It's on live stream, 7.30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Catch us on the big green machine with the R and the umbles. You can't say it together. You get yelled at by certain people. But we love YouTube streams right here. We love them. Yes, Daddy, pay my bills. In the meantime, I love all y'all. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. But I am on to the next one.